Hey guys, so previously, in a previous video, we created Azure Virtual Desktop, where users can log into virtual machines and uh, do their work. But what if we wanna do a remote app where they can log in and just start an app? And that's what we're discussing here today. So the first thing we do is we go to Azure Virtual Desktop and we follow the create a host pool. I'm gonna put it in my uh, resource group that I always do. And we uh, need to give it a name here. So I'm just gonna call it You can call it whatever you want. This is not a validation environment. And previously we created the desktop and now we're gonna go with remote, uh, remote app. The host pool, I usually go with pooled. So if you have multiple virtual machines, it'll, it will just basically spread the uh, traffic to multiple machines. Although we're gonna be adding only one machine in this demo, but usually in production, you'd add more than one. The load balance, balancing algorithm, I usually go with breadth first. So this means it's gonna spread the traffic over multiple machines. The depth first would uh, send all the traffic to one machine until it reaches its limits and then start sending the traffic to the second machine. Next, virtual machines. And I do wanna add a virtual machine. This is the name prefix. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it this name and uh, I do not need any availability zones and I just wanna go with the standard. Now, if you have an image, you can select it. If not, you can just go and select a Windows 10 or a Windows 11. And usually we uh, go with the multi-session windows. So uh, they had a multi-session here. So this is a multi-session. and you simply pick the image you want. So for this demo, I'm gonna actually uh, go with my own customized image that I created earlier. It just has all my apps and everything. For the size of the machine, you so I'm gonna leave a link to this uh, site here from Microsoft. So they have a light user, a medium, a heavy, and a power. Now in production, I have not seen uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a deployment that works smoothly with medium or light, you know, having four users per CPU is really, or, or six users per CPU, unless they're only going in to, to use Microsoft Word or just to browse to a, a website or a couple of websites and, and such, it would be okay but usually we go with the heavy and if the users are using apps that use databasing or lots of uh, PDF writing or, you know, apps that require heavy CPU usage would go with the power, which is one user per CPU. But the average, I usually go with the uh, two users per CPU. So if we pick a size, a machine with uh, four CPU that basically can host seven or eight users working smoothly. And it, of course, you have to count for the RAM as well. You can select what size do you need. I'm gonna go with a smaller size here, but usually in production, you would stick with the uh, big size. The number of VMs, I'm gonna go with one, but usually again, you would go in production with more. It depends on what you need. It's always good to go with premium SSD, but for this demo, I'm going with standard. It's always good to enable boot diagnostics. I'm not gonna enable it for this demo. Choose your virtual network and subnet and security group. Now, if you need help with the uh, virtual network subnet and security group, I also have a video that explains them in details. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below for it. We're not gonna allow um, any, any uh, public inbound ports. Now for Active Directory, I do wanna join this to my domain. I do have a domain controller, so I'm just gonna provide the credentials for it. You can specify what organization unit you want this to uh, go to. I'm not gonna specify it, it's just gonna join it to the default OU, which is computers, and then I can move them. 
and you can provide the virtual machine, the local virtual machine, uh, local admin account where you can log into the machine. Next workspace, yes, I do wanna register a new workspace. I'm gonna call it uh, this name. It's always good in production to enable diagnostic settings. For here, I'm not gonna enable it. I'm just gonna go to review and create. And I'm just gonna create it. And I'm gonna pause for a couple of, couple of minutes until it's uh, done and come back. In the meantime, please rem rem remember to like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Okay, so our deployment is complete. It took about 25 minutes. It says total machines is one and one can connect. Now let's see how we can uh, configure the application group that we can use. Okay, so let's go ahead and log into our virtual machine and see what uh, app we wanna use. Um, and I see that the IP address of this machine is uh, 10.6. So I'm just gonna log into it. All right, so we are logged into our virtual machine, which is uh, going to be used for uh, the remote session desktop. And I do have Notepad++ here that I uh, would like my users to be using. So the first thing is we want to go and see where this is. Uh, this app is. It's under C Program Files. And here it is. It's Notepad. So we want to say that uh, the path to our app it's under C program files notepad. So I'm going to just uh, jot this uh, on a notepad uh, document here quickly. And we also need to have an icon for this. And uh, usually apps have icons. So I'm just going to search for dot ICO, which stands for icon. And there's one icon here. I'm just gonna copy this and put it in the same path so we can have both in the same path. I'm gonna use this as my icon and my, maybe call it uh, I, I, icon. So this is our icon and uh, basically it's uh, I, dot .ico. So I'm just going to also say Okay, so now if we go to our application groups it creates a, a by default a desktop version. We do want to create a remote uh, version. So I'm going to hit create Resource group, the host pool, we already created one. And we're going to do it remote. So I'm going to call it MAS Remote 12. Now next applications, we're going to add an application. In our case here, we want to go with file path. The application path is what we uh, got earlier. The application identifier, it's really on the portal for admins to know what it is. So I'm just going to call it uh, Notepad Plus, for example. And the display name, I'm also going to go call it Notepad, uh, Notepad Plus. Now, this does not require a command line, so I'm just going to keep it as no. Now, next, I'm going to go to icon. And the same thing, we have the path for the icon we got earlier. So I'm just going to add it here. And I'm going to review and add. Okay, now next assignment. Those are the users that would be using this remote app. So I do have a group here that contains all my uh, Azure Virtual Desktop users. I'm going to add this group. And that's going to assign it to them. And next, uh, Workspace. Yes, we do have a workspace that we created earlier, and I'm just going to assign it here. 
it is a good idea to enable uh, diagnostics in production. I am not going to enable it here. If you want to create tags, you can. And the final thing is uh, review and create. And I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes, pause, and come back when this is done. Okay, our deployment is complete. We have one application and one assignment. Okay, so at this time, we're really just going to sign in, subscribe on our remote desktop app, and try it out. Okay, and here's our app, and here's our icon. If I double-click it now, I should see the uh, app opening. And here it is, basically. And here it is, basically the app opened, and we were able to do a remote app for all users. Now, uh, you can add any app the same way. Basically, I just chose to use the Notepad++. And that concludes our video. Please remember to uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. And see you in the next video.